Good morning, brothers and sisters and friends. Could you kindly rise as the court is going to enter the church? Thank you so much. You may be seated, please. Dear brothers and sisters, we'll just ask Earl Falcus to come to a eulogy uh, on Gary's life. Please come forward. Who is your most handsome uncle? I may not be rich, but I at least look like a Greek tycoon. When I think, I think deep. If you don't believe me, it's because you may think I'm a fool. Take a fool's advice. Just some fam famous quotes Uncle Gary would say. Good morning, friends, family, and colleagues of our beloved Uncle Gary. My name is Earl Falcus, one, uncle, one of Uncle Gary's nephews, and according to him sometimes, his most handsome nephew. The four quotes mentioned earlier was what Uncle Gary would tell us at birthday parties all the time since we were young. And by us, I'm referring to my cousins and I, as he enjoyed sitting with the youngsters with his very yellow looking glass of water. A very yellow looking glass of water he always came with two functions. These quotes also describe his personality, charming, witty, confident, caring, and very honest. Uncle Gary had a wicked sense of humor that rubbed off on anyone that was near him. No one was upset around Uncle Gary for too long, although he did have his serious side too. Uncle Gary was born on the 24th of February, 1954, here in Port Elizabeth, now known as Kabecha. 
He was the second born to my grandparents, Pa Vincent and Ma Alaba. During the week, he stayed in Shoreville to attend school with his grandma, Oma Gracie. On a Wednesday night after church in those years, the choir members stayed behind for choir practice in Nielsen Street Congregation, and their children would sit and wait in the balcony. There was a big clock on the balcony facing the altar. And then one night, during the practice, the choir conductor suddenly said, is that the time already? Not knowing that Uncle Gary moved the arm of the clock to speed up the time so that the practice could end earlier. Uncle Gary was a big soccer fan during his school years. His favorite soccer club was PE City back in the 60s. He attended games with his Uncle Potts on Friday evenings. Uncle Gary loved his team so much that he attempted to dye his white shorts red to the actual colors of PE City. I would love to know what color these white shorts actually turned out to be. In high school, Uncle Gary moved to Martin Street in Galvindale to stay with his parents. Here, he played outside with his friends every day. And then just before his father would come home, my grandfather, Uncle Gary would pack out all his books to pretend as if he had studied and worked all day. Now this is something I didn't know. Uncle Gary actually had a passion for drawing. He wanted to be a sign writer. However, unfortunately due to the political climate of the time, he could not follow his dream because of job reservation. Evangelist Klaus Vorweiler employed Uncle Gary as an apprentice tiler. He then became a qualified tiler. Uncle Gary was very proud of his work. He had a very sharp eye within his craft, making random comments while just having a normal conversation with him, such as something is not being aligned. Some of his proudest work was the tiling of the steps at Happy Valley, where he often took his children when they were younger and the tiling of the Phoenix Hotel, where he took his children every Saturday for lunch without fail. Another passion of Uncle Gary was hand gliding. Uncle Elton, one of Uncle Gary's cousins, remembers the good old years around when Uncle Gary was 24. A young businessman already would fetch him together with Uncle Clive and take them to Maitland's River Mouth in his VW camper van with two heavy cooler boxes, one box full of meat and the other one you can use your imagination when that was filled with. <laughs> Uncle Gary had two strong love languages. They were acts of service and quality time. We all witnessed how he treated his workers. Yes, he was very strict, but always with love and care. He cared very deeply for them. Just let Uncle Gary find out you were in Galvindale and you did not pop in to say hi. I'm all sure we all have him on our call logs trying to get hold of us by asking us how we are doing and then asking if you are coming over for a braai straight off the fire, something he firmly believed in. According to him, it was a sin to put meat in a bowl, then put it in the microwave to be warmed up again. Uncle Gary didn't eat meat like that. If Uncle Gary was, if Uncle Gary was like that with all of us, one can only imagine what he was like with Auntie Meryl, his children, and his grandson. They collectively mentioned how he would take, how he would take them to the beach every single weekend which was one of their favorite activities with him. He also enjoyed taking them camping. Even though they did not enjoy camping as much as he did, Uncle Gary always found a way to make it fun. One day, Uncle Gary took him to the Shamari Game Reserve and said, if they sleep on the floor that evening in a hut, you will let them sleep in the treehouse the following evening. Megan asked him, why, do they need to, why can't they just sleep in the treehouse straight away? He replied, no, because they need to learn what it feels like sleeping on the floor because some people are not so fortunate in life to have beds all the time. As jokey as Uncle Gary may have been, he had a very serious side to him too. And he was always full of life lessons. Back to that famous quote, if you don't believe me, it's because you may think I'm a fool. Take a fool's advice. All of us sitting in this congregation this morning, we are not perfect. And Uncle Gary was not shy about highlighting that he was not either. In fact, he was very open about mistakes he may have made in the past. However, one thing Uncle Gary felt very strongly about was that us as youngsters should not make the same mistakes he made. He always gave us advice at every opportunity he had, and for that, we are very grateful. Damien, Uncle Gary's oldest nephew, shared something quite touching, a moment both him and Uncle Gary never really never shared with anyone. Damien and Small Gary, Uncle Gary's firstborn son, were very close. Damon looked up to him as an older brother. 
And he was the only male cousin Damien had at the time. When Damien and his family came back to South Africa for small Gary's funeral, there was one evening where Uncle Gary told everyone he was taking Damien to the shop. He took Damien to the scene of small Gary's death and used that opportunity to teach him a simple and important life lesson. It was about protecting yourself in life and you should always be aware of your surroundings at all times. Damon with, took Damon together with Uncle Gary's children, collectively both shared how Uncle Gary used to visit them during break time at school, and chat with, his, with, his, with, with their friends, and also just to check in how they were doing. He would meet their friends, and their friends would even know what car Uncle Gary would pull up in. They would even call Damon together with his children, with, um, with Uncle Gary's children, to come and say hi to Uncle Gary. He brought and shared sweets, food, and lots of laughter with everyone. A strong lesson we can learn from Uncle Gary's life is to live in the moment. Uncle Gary always made memories for himself and for us no matter what the occasion was, either by him creating them on his own or by saying something slightly controversial, he may have said, that played on replay in our heads on our way home from a gathering, that you actually said to yourself, but hang on, he actually has a point there. Another lesson we can learn is we all have busy schedules. Make time to phone your loved ones and reach out to them. And when your loved ones do try and reach out to you, just to catch up, but you are unavailable during that moment, make an effort to phone them back. You never know when will be the last time you will see their name on your call log. I think all of us sitting here today thought Uncle Gary was invincible. And he did too. Constantly reminding us how he never went, really went to hospital in his life. I'm telling you, it must have definitely been something in that yellow looking water that kept him going so strong over the years. And I'm sure we all thought it would be a very long time before we gathered together for such an occasion like this morning. Thank you for your honest life lessons, Uncle Gary, for living the life you wanted to live to, and how you wanted to live life to make you happy, which is a wonderful example to us all. Thank you for the love you had for all of us and the many different ways you displayed it. It is very cliche to say we will never see someone again or we'll never see the same of someone again once they have passed. But one thing I can say very confidently is that you will never see another Uncle Gary again. Till we meet again, our most handsome uncle. We love you dearly.
in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, almighty, great, loving, eternal, and our Heavenly Father. We certainly are a congregation in need of comfort, and in our expressions through the opening hymn, the Comforter has come. May, dear Father, each and every one of us, and especially the bereaved family, experience your grace and divine comfort, the comforting fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And when we are comforted, dear Father, strengthened, and then we can continue to embrace that which is your holy will. You are the Almighty One. You are our Creator. You know everything. And everything is possible with you. And through these few moments, dear Father, in which we gather here to be strengthened and to be comforted, and again, dear Father, to reflect upon the life of your dear Son, a faithful husband, a dear Father, a very good friend and brother, one dear Father who dwelt with us, and the beautiful memories which we have, the encounters of each and every one, certainly he is treasured. And when, dear Father, we have to take leave of a loved one, there's sadness and there is sorrow. And today we turn to you for where else, dear Father, can we go? We come to you as we are in need of comfort. We want to accept and also understand, dear Father, that which is your holy will. And when these things happen, we do not always understand. We do not always have the answers. For your mind, dear Father, is far greater than the sum total of our gathering as we are here today. And because of this, we humbly subject ourselves under your mighty will. May this also be the portion of the family as well. And the beautiful love which they will experience throughout this day and which they already have experienced. And also now, dear Father, in these moments, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and also through the uplifting prayers of our dear district apostle and our dear chief apostle. And the congregation who gathers here, we all have our personal needs and desires. And we all continue, dear Father. We know that life starts with you. There is a time to be born and certainly there is a time to die. And we make use in the interim time period as we gather here, for we remain and we need to continue. And where, dear Father, your Son finds himself, may his soul continue to rest in peace. And well, dear Father, as a visible and the invisible congregation as we gather here, together we stand as the bridal congregation, waiting for the return of your dear Son. Sanctify us now for these moments. Surround us with your angel service, with your protection, and for all the preparations for this divine service, crown it with your blessing. This, dear Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, and especially to the bereaved family, we have a word out of Psalm 116, and we read verse 7. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. Psalm 116, ons lees die sevende vers as basis vir hierdie diens. My siel, keer terug tot jou ris, want die Heere het goed aan jou gedoen.
And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, yes, that is why we are here, Meryl, this morning, so that the Lord can strengthen us, strengthen you, the children, the whole family, the whole congregation. And when we are strengthened in these moments in which we are in need of comfort, once we are strengthened, then certainly we are filled with new determination that we can glorify and that we can give thanks to God, our Heavenly Father. So I want to say that when we come for this funeral divine service, certainly there's sadness and there's tears and there's sorrow, for we will remember Gary and what he meant to us and how unique and special he was. And as we celebrate his life, then certainly he was quite a jovial person, you know, and uh, he understands our sadness, he understands our sorrow, but I think where he is, he, he might just give us a message, just be joyful also, just be happy and continue the way I used to do things. You know, he had a special way of how we lived his life, and um, I think I read to you a short life history of late Gary Lester Falcus, and once we put that into perspective, we, we understand also our relationship, each and every one of us, which we had with Gary. Gary was born on the 24th of February, 1954, to faithful new apostolic parents, Vincent and Erleba Falkes. He was the second born of three children. His parents and son Gary preceded him already into eternity. Gary was baptized on the 31st of March, 1954, and he was sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit on the 1st of May, 1955. He attended primary school at G.J. Lowe and Diedrich and high school at Patterson, where he completed his schooling career. He then took up an apprenticeship, passed his trade test at Olifantsfontein. He remained in the tiling trade for the rest of his life until shortly before his death. Gary met Merrill and soon a strong relationship was established between them, which blossomed in holy matrimony on the 6th of April, 1994. Their relationship flourished and they were blessed with three children, Megan, Robin, and Damon. As parents, they raised their children in the new apostolic traditions, taking them to church regularly, as well as Sunday school, RI, and confirmation. They later on joined the ranks of the young people and also sang in the choir. And then here's another paragraph, Gary's strengths and character. He was a man that was truly devoted to give the best to his family and an example to his children in the way as to treat fellow people always with dignity and respect. He loved God and the church. He was a fun-loving people's person and always had the remarkable ability to make people laugh, especially at functions and family gatherings. I want to add also at funerals. Gary went to a funeral and after the funeral, you know, you know how it goes after the funeral. So that's what I mean. Fun-loving, jovial person, unique in his character, so let us continue with the way that Gary used to do it. We continue with our life and we make the best of it like he did it. We want to take a few lessons today also out of his life. He was always actively in contact with his family and friends. If he did not hear or see you for some time, you would be the one who calls. I think you can now think about what is the next question. Waar is jy? Lewe jy nog? And he had his reasons why maybe he had this way of asking those questions. Recently, while Meryl was visiting Robin in Dubai, he had the urgency of doing repair and maintenance work at home. Nothing could stop him. He just had to get it done. And this is how he served his family. 
I don't know whether that doesn't say here that you're given those instructions. You know, I go away. I'm going to leave you in peace. There's no excuse. When I come back, everything should be in order. I recently said that to the bishop as well. His wife is not here, and she's coming home, and he has to clean up. You know, the wives just they just has this thing of making the man do what he must do. So uh, it's not written here. But he wanted to do it for you when you come back. Everything is fine. Yeah, he fell ill a while ago and just couldn't get healed. His health then, de then deteriorated until such time that he was hospitalized. After being in hospital just over a week, God called him home on the evening of 17 November 2022. He will surely be missed by all. He is survived by his wife Meryl, children Megan, Robin, and Dalen, son-in-law Riku, grandchild, I like to say this name, Ryu, Ryu, Ryu. I always pause with this name, Ryu. Okay, Ryu. His brother Elwin, <coughs> sister Vanita, and a host of family and friends. To God be the glory for giving him a lifetime of 68 years where we could have experienced much love and excitement with him. And so a few thoughts which the family has put together and made dear brothers and sisters through the comfort and through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we continue to experience great comfort, the grace, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and certainly reflect upon His life and celebrate it all to the honor and praise, as it says here, to God be the glory. May we today also, as a morning congregation, become a thankful congregation. I ask the choir, please, to sing with us. <laughs> My dear brothers and my dear sisters, dear Meryl, children, family, certainly with the passing on of Gary, he's no more there. And there are fears, and there's uncertainty, and there's anxiousness. And with all that, the choir also gives a response in these moments of fear and of sorrow. Where to shall I be going? And we can only come to the Lord. We come to Him for He is our Creator. And He is able to do whatever we need because everything is possible with God. That which seems impossible. For life seems impossible going forward. So where to now? What now? And with that, 
impossibility. Where to shall I be going? Let us return to the Lord. We heard earlier on, he loved the Lord. He loved the church. And he reared the children accordingly as well. And given his experience, his exposure, as far as his life of faith is concerned, certainly we are very thankful. I just had a look at a few verses before this verse, which I read. I read, Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. What has the Lord done to him? And we all have our expressions, we all have our experiences as to how we have seen the life of Gary and what the Lord has done for him. I think that also became clear in the eulogy as to how unique he was and what he meant to all of us. In verse 5 it says, Gracious is the Lord and righteous. In these moments of sorrow and of sadness and of uncertainty, return to the Lord. Where to shall we be going? Let us go to the Lord because He is gracious and He is righteous. He knows we don't always understand the reasoning. We don't know what is the will of God. We pray, let your will be done. And when the Lord executes His will, we do not always understand. And certainly, brothers and sisters, as we are here today, no answer is given as to why he had to go on the 17th of November. We don't have that answer. And when we don't have that answer, then we turn to the Lord with faith and we pray, even in our unbelief, Lord, let your will be done. That's how we embrace this gracious Lord who is righteous. It says here, the sixth verse, the Lord preserves the simple. I don't know whether I can use that attribute to your dad as well. Simple. Humble. Yeah. Simple and humble. There's many things that impresses people and maybe how they want to leave an impression. Gary always chose the simple way. The simple way of doing things. The simple way of saying things. It's just simple. Nothing complicated, nothing difficult. You know, life is already so complicated. Life is already so difficult. Then the one or the other to come and add more complications already to a complex life. I think he tried to simplify everything. It says here, the Lord preserves the simple. Further it says, I, I was brought low and he saved me. Even in his simplicity, he realized I'm a sinner, and I make mistakes, I come short, I'm not perfect. He always used to speak about the, the ministry, can we talk about the ministry? You know, he says, no ways, I'm not worthy to be a minister, but he actually ordained himself because he said he's a district deacon. <laughs> when you talk ministry to him, he's not interested. That's how simple he is, not interested. And. For some, it's, it's, it's very important. It's very necessary. Simple. And I'm not worthy. I'm not ready for that, etc., etc. But when he speaks about the fact that he is the district deacon, then he added to that as well, but you will see at my funeral. I always remember that. I never knew that one day I will conduct his funeral as well. At my funeral, you will see. So, Gary, wherever you are, have a look at this congregation. District deacon. There's no such ministry in the New Apostolic Church. Just for the visitors who are here, there's no such ministry. Again, just see maybe how creative he is, how he saw things, etc. And maybe he thought one day, maybe that was a revelation, very prophetic word, there will be such a ministry. There's no such ministry. No. That's it. So that's clear. We only have a deacon. That's it in the congregation. But he saw himself as a district deacon. Now it says here, return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. And just in how simple and how easy and how fun-loving and how unique and how special he was. He and we all and the family can testify of what the Lord has done for him. We can talk about his upbringing, his commitment to the church, his commitment to the family, etc. You know, 
he looked at himself as a, as a human being, and I think there's, amongst you as a family, Alvin, I don't know what to say, but Gary used to say, who's the most handsome uncle? <laughs> I don't know where to put you, Vanita, I don't know, you know. But he claimed that, who is the most handsome? And don't add the color of his eyes as well. Yeah, so that, that, that was important for him. He had this unique way of looking at himself, and uh, of course we respected him and enjoyed maybe even those comments. Now, looking at himself, maybe in his appearance and how handsome he was at the middle, I think that was the color of his eyes that <laughs> made this relationship flourish, you know, and so on. Yeah. And then, I mean, he used to say also, I may not be rich. I saw that on somebody's posting there as well. I may not be rich, but he looked like some, somebody or some nation, people maybe with money, you know. I might not be rich, but when you look at me, I appear to be, you know, a very rich man, etc. So, brothers and sisters, he committed himself to his family. It was a very, I think you mentioned, Meryl, hard-working hands is now at rest. He's a tiler by profession, and of course, with the tiling business, those who know, you have to work with your hands. And he worked physically, but also by attending to the family and to secure an income in an honorable way for his family. Hard-working hands is now at rest. One of the children said he was content with his father. Yeah. Content with whatever he has to go through, he is content with that. And maybe the other one said... He has given more than what he has received. Yeah. In his simplicity, he has given and always that giving nature. And I think about his giving nature, your family will know again when you have your gatherings. And he also wants to bring his food, his own food, you know, whatever he cooks there at home and bring him the poiti masam. But it is always some other food, special food, you know. Okay. I don't know what is on the menu for the for the afternoon. Gary's favorite. We'll not say anything about what is the favorite, but you always used to have that kind of contribution when you have a big lunch or whatever the case may be. Then he said, oh, this is my favorite, please. And of course, to the children, your biggest fan and supporter in everything that you have done. That's it. Biggest fan and greatest supporter. Nice to speak about even the relationship, parent, child connection always there for the children since you were born and your studies and wherever you went whatever you did it was there your greatest support and so that brothers and sisters brings us to the next verse which is just after that which i also want to highlight I, in fact i dedicate this whole psalm 116 to him verse 12 basically asks a question when we now celebrate the life of Gary, the question is, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? And as a family, you also sit with that question. Here is my husband, our father, my brother, and that which he has done, the way that he conducted himself, the way that we interacted, the way that he presented himself, what shall we render to the Lord? Just to show that we appreciate Gary. We appreciate our father. We appreciate our friends. We appreciate our brother here in the church. And what shall we today render to the Lord? For the Lord has dealt bountifully with him. It brings us to the point that when we consider what the Lord God has done, he is our creator. And he has given Gary the gift of life. And today, as we are here, we still have the gift of life. And when we have the gift of life, what shall we render to the Lord? To show our appreciation, to show our thanks. The last part of this obituary, which I'm very thankful for, to God be the glory. May in the days to come, 
in the months to come, in the years to come, where to shall I be going? We can only turn to the Lord. And when we turn to the Lord, certainly we will remember Gary. You will remember your husband, your, your father, your brother. And when we return to the Lord, because it said here in the obituary, he loved God. He loved the church. He would want you to continue to love God. He would want you to continue to remain in the church. He's done this all his life. You know, he always spoke about the fact that one day when he turned 70 years old, you know, I'm just waiting for 70 years old. That again is just the way that Gary came across. And he accepted, maybe the Lord must spare me to 68, then, then I can go. He understand also that we will not remain on this earth forever. He didn't make it to 70. He made it to 68. That's for sure. And as we are here today, brothers and sisters, maybe a nice lesson out of his life. He realized we will not be on this earth forever. That time will come. And when the time comes, then so, how do I live my life? May you continue to live your life in thankfulness to God, our Heavenly Father. We constantly hear about thanks. We all have our understanding about thanks, but maybe... I, I want to add maybe a little bit of a new dimension to our thanks. When we look at being thankful, whether it is to Gary, whether it is to the gift of life, whether it is to the creation, whatever God has done, let us always appreciate the value of the gift. Appreciate the value of the gift. It's just simple, brothers and sisters. Whenever you receive a gift, yeah, it's, it's this festive time period now, a season of giving, and people will share gifts. Gary was a gift to you. He was a gift to you as a children. He was a gift to you as a family. And when we talk about just a simple gift, there's always a value attached to the gift. And then you determine the value, and then it means something to you because it's expensive. And sometimes somebody gave a rather cheaper gift. And when you receive something cheap, then, of course, by your interpretation, that's not a nice gift because it's so cheap, it's so simple. But when we look at the gift of life, the gift of Gary, the gift of him as a person, as a husband, as a father, as a brother, as a member of the church, where does it come from? God is our creator. The gift of life. And when we appreciate the value of life. And recently in these few years, one, two years, three years, we all realize the gift of life. With these days when we celebrate the birthday, people wish you and they add to that as well. Health. Good health. And so brothers and sisters may we celebrate our life as you celebrated your life. And Gary had his way of celebrating even after a day's work, Mel. He just had his way of celebrating his accomplishment for the day. And then he goes and he goes and sits somewhere. And he sits back and he enjoys whatever there is to be enjoyed. I shall not mention anything. I go immediately over to that. Just watch this. It says here in verse 13. That's the last part we conclude now. In verse 13, Meryl, it says, I will take up the cup. Okay? I will take up the cup. Now all of you have something in mind what is in that cup. The psalmist says, I will take up the cup of salvation. Here, a specific reference is referred to the tradition of the Jews who celebrated the exodus from Egypt. And they celebrated the grace of God for He has liberated them. And they used to pass the cup around. Certainly a cup of wine. Yes, that's what it is. They circ circulated this cup and 
it was in memory to praise and to give thanks unto God for their liberation. And today, how do we do this? The cup of salvation. Gary loved the church. He came to a divine service to come and celebrate Holy Communion. That's a nice way of seeing bread and wine. Not the other way. Bread and wine. Celebrate the life of Jesus. Celebrate the death of Jesus. He died for us. He went into the realm of the dead. And he prepares a place for us. He will return. Gary would want you to continue as a family to come into the church. Come into the fellowship. Come and celebrate. Come and remember what Jesus has done. Come and eat the bread. Come and drink the wine. Come and celebrate Holy Communion. I will take up the cup of salvation. The Lord has dealt bountifully with you. He was called, he was baptized, he received the gift of the Holy Spirit, and Jesus died for Gary. Jesus died for all of us. And he prepares a place. And when he returns, certainly those who have passed on, they shall be resurrected. Those who are alive shall be changed. And together we will meet our Savior and our bridegroom. Again, I say again, this last point here, to God be the glory for giving him a lifetime of 68 years. And maybe the last portion of this Psalm 116 says, I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of of all these people in the courts of the Lord's house. He loved the Lord. He loved the church. And brothers and sisters, we ask ourselves, what is our relationship with our God? What is our relationship with the church of Christ? And what is our relationship as far as our family, our loved ones, our fellow human beings, as we appreciate the value of the gift, we remember who gave the gift. And of course, we show affection to the giver. And if Gary is the gift of life for you as his wife, for you as the children, we remember the giver. The giver for all of us is greater than the gift. Our God, he is great. He is almighty. And let us give to this great God, the Almighty One, all honor and praise, even in times of sadness, even in times of sorrow. When we go through life, nothing is easy. Yes, we want to have an easy life. We want to have a simple life. There's many complications. But remember, the giver of our life is our God, and He is greater than the gift. So, brothers and sisters, that was the relationship which Gary had with our God, that was the relationship which he had with his church, and that's the relationship which he had with you as family, and of course, all of us as friends. May he continue to rest in peace, for as the word says, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters, this is of course a cremation service, so we can all rise now. I now return the mortal body to the earth with the words, earth to earth, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. Soul and spirit, however, I commend to the love of Jesus Christ, who shall guard over it until the resurrection to eternal life. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. We can now close in prayer. Almighty, eternal, loving Father, we bow humbly and thankfully before you as our great God. You remain for us the giver of all good gifts. And with all the gifts that you have given unto us, dear Father, the gift of life, the gift of your son Jesus who sacrificed his life, you, dear Father, remain greater.
for you are our Father. And in these moments of sadness and of sorrow, may it always be the portion of the family that in these times, dear Father, they can always turn to you. For you are our God and you will provide in all their needs, all dear Father, in accordance with your holy will. For us as a congregation, as we reach out and gather around the family, certainly a work of love, reaching out unto others. And may, dear Father, we demonstrate the appreciation of the gift of life by loving you and loving our neighbor. And this is what Gary has done to the best of his ability. He realized, dear Father, even his own shortcomings. And therefore, he appreciates coming into your house for the forgiveness of sins and the celebration of Holy Communion. And as the visible and the invisible congregation, we continue to prepare ourselves. We want to be ready. Prosper the way for us so into the future. Now, Father, be with the family, be with each and every one. Those who traveled extensive distances, dear Father, always charge your angels to accompany each and every one. All that which has been prepared and planned, dear Father, crown these moments of fellowship with beautiful interactions, beautiful reminiscence, beautiful remembrance, dear Father, and that we continue always to remain faithful to our calling and the purpose that which you have in store for us. So be with us, and dear Father, together with our loved ones from the realms of the beyond, we pray, send your dear Son, accept us all. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you very much dear choir members and may that always re-echo in your hearts to always give thanks and praise to God our Heavenly Father. Lastly brothers and sisters just a word of thanks Meryl and the children would like to express 
their thanks as follows. Firstly, all thanks and praise. You surely knew the hymn, eh? All thanks and praise to our Heavenly Father for His loving grace and kindness. Gary was a God-given gift and blessing to us. And of course, you know, when we are thankful then for the choir for what you have done, thank you very much for the sacrifice and bringing comfort and a beautiful atmosphere also here in the house of the Lord this morning. We would like to thank the doctors and staff at Greenacres Hospital who treated Gary with great care and compassion over the last few months, as well as wishes and condolences relayed either in person by a telephone, messages or social media are deeply appreciated. The outpouring of your love is truly comforting. Sincere thanks to the services of the undertaker, Victory Funeral Home. Heartfelt thanks to family and friends for your support and help over recent weeks and months. The family thanks everyone here today for your support. Your presence is also truly comforting. Special thanks to Ms. Maureen Peters for your selfless love and care for Gary and your support to us as a family <coughs> over the last few days and weeks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's, I completed everything, all the thanks. And of course, certainly with love from Meryl and the children. So brothers and sisters, that's how we come to the end of this divine service. I now call upon the four bearers, please, to come forward. And as the cortege uh, leave the church, ask the congregation, please, to rise while we all sing together hymn number 75. Hymn number 75.